Hello, good morning, afternoon or evening, good morning, afternoon, wherever you happen to be. Hope it's going well for you. So I'd like to look at the search for the Holy Grail and why that's relevant to healthy masculinity and why it's actually practical and useful in these modern times. To... Let's get into it. There's lots of entertainment stems from the idea of the Holy Grail, you know, movies and books, etc. are um, using the theme of the Holy Grail as a focus for entertainment. The Holy Grail has got so cluttered up with popular assumptions and mythology, you know, so there's huge cultural clutter, you might say, around the Holy Grail. And so I'd like to try and clear some of the clutter out of the way. Then we can look at why it's, why it's actually very useful and profoundly helpful to look at the Holy Grail. But as I say, we need to get the, the clutter out of the way, then we can see why it is actually valuable and useful. And then an aspect of that is, is not just an entertainment. You know, just looking at something as profound and meaningful as the Holy Grail from the angle of entertainment, it doesn't really help. Though I hope what I'm going to say is entertaining. It's going to be much more than that. It's going to, going to go a lot deeper than entertainment. And the thing about the, the whole concept of the Holy Grail, the modern interpretation is of it, it's about the story of King Arthur. It's, um, it's a but focus obviously around Christianity. And, but also there's evidence that it might be, have roots in something far more ancient as well. It can begun to symbolize something within the human psyche, almost like an archetype. It's like something which is a, an image or a symbol, a universal pattern or ideal that exists. And so this, this doesn't take anything away from the whole Arthurian or Christian approach to the Holy Grail. It's good to recognize that actually it might go, you know, be much more ancient than that. There's something fundamental within us human beings that arises and emerges, and, and matured and grew and emerges as the story of the Holy Grail. The thing about making things too much of a mystery and focusing on the mystery of something, is the mind is very good at creating more of what it's focused on. So if we focus on the Holy Grail as a mystery, we'll get more and more mystery. <laughs> oh, the mystery of the Holy Grail. We get more and more mystery, more and more obscure, more and more, oh, it's this, it's that, oh, here's a sign here, here's, here's oh, here's a clue, here's another clue, oh, or maybe this and maybe that. And that can be fun and entertaining, but it's not... It's not necessarily getting to the core of things because it's, it can end up being the pursuit of mystery for the, its own sake. It could be the pursuit of mystery for the fun of it, which is fine, but it's not a search for the Holy Grail, it's pursuit of mystery. <laughs> so there's a difference between the search of, for the Holy Grail and a, the pursuit of mystery. It's better not to mistake one for the other. So if we're just into the, uh, having fun with mysteries, like a mystery story, that's not the search for the Holy Grail. It's, it's got its place in the scheme of things, but it's not the deeply spiritual process that the search for the Holy Grail really is. And conceiving the Holy Grail as a, as a cup, you know, it's supposed to be within, or within the Arthurian belief systems, um, is the cup in which Jesus drank at the Last Supper, and it's also supposed to be the cup that Joseph of Arimathea collected some of Jesus' blood in at the time of the crucifixion. And... Part of the legend is that it was brought to, to England, brought to Glastonbury by Joseph of Arimathea, and it's supposed to be a physical cup. But whether the thing exists as a physical object, I don't really think it's the point. As they say, when the finger points at the moon, you look at the moon, not at the finger. And the whole idea of looking for the cup, looking for this physical object, actually is the wrong route, I think, for the actual search for the grail because it's something that ultimately happens inside us. It happens inside us in our life as we go about our daily tasks, as we go through the business of living life and discover that the material world doesn't offer us everything we really need. It certainly doesn't offer us immortality. And the grail has somewhat become a symbol of immortality. The, the legends say that the gift that the Holy Grail gives to the finder is immortality. That's the ultimate gift that the Grail is supposed to bestow upon those that have it, or the one that has it. So that's an interesting symbol of something shaped as a cup that gives immortality. And individuals going in search for this, this object. So literally, what it is in a sense, 
it's a search for a cup or a chalice, a, a symbolic cup. So what does a cup symbolize? What is your cup? What in you is a cup? And I would suggest it's your character. A cup is a container. Your character is the container of your purpose. It's the container and the channel through which your purpose in life is expressed. So in everything that it comes out of you into your life is dependent on your character. It's dependent on how you've developed your character, how you've developed yourself, and how you've interacted with events in your life, and whether it's allowed you to develop noble characteristics, or where it's caused you to develop not so noble and unworthy characteristics. To the extent that you've elements of your character that are judgmental, cynical, spiteful, resentful, to that extent, you'll be extending that into your life. Your character, your chalice, will be extending that and offering that to life. Whereas if, if you've cultivated things like forgiveness, compassion, enlightened love, kindness, uh, generosity, to that extent, your, your character can become not only an expression or a chalice for those qualities, and not only a channel which those qualities can come into the world to you living, living your life and doing the business of life, something else can come in. Something, something actually, actual immortal can come in. Your soul, your spirit, the higher and better aspects of yourself can come in and be expressed in your life. They can become a natural part of your life. So to that extent that you cultivated these finer qualities, to that extent, you're becoming immortal. You're becoming your immortal self. You're becoming the highest and best within yourself, which is part of something much bigger, much vaster. You're sacrificing the sense of separation and isolation for belonging to something, something deeper and uh, bigger and wiser because, because qualities like f forgiveness and compassion and enlightened love are, are effectively immortal qualities. So that to me is the real search for the Holy Grail. It's to search for the highest and best within yourself and how to express it in your daily life. Because if you look at some of the stories around, uh, the, the modern stories around the Holy Grail and how all oh, the Nazis were, were looking for it and all this kind of stuff. And if you look at how absurd that is, the something that's supposed to be the holiest of objects were to be looked for by one of the most evil group of individuals and the horrendous things they've done on the planet. And the absurdity where that would make them immortal, like that was an incredibly materialistic, narrow way of looking at the Holy Grail. And it would be something exclusive, that something that came from, from Jesus, who was all for helping the meek and the weak and going out into the marketplace and, and dealing with all sorts of people that were, that were kind of ostracized or alienated from society. And the, the idea that, that that would culminate in an object that could only be found through lots of searching was obscure, hard to get, you know, hard to obtain, um, unavailable. You know, his basic core teachings were right there. So, so it's absurd to assume that Jesus, the culmination of Jesus' work in life, would be a cup or something, something exclusive, narrow, and unobtainable by an ordinary person. Would is this to me an absurd notion? Completely missing the point. <laughs> it doesn't mean you can't have fun with the entertainment value of the Holy Grail, but then it's not really a spiritual search then. It's just uh it's just dabbling around and playing a game. And it's all right to play a game if you know you're just playing a game. <laughs> but you have to know this is just a game. So the whole modern Holy Grail thing is, a, is just a game. Um, so it doesn't matter whether a physical object is it or not. You know, if there is such an object as the Holy Grail and it's found and recognizes belonging to humanity, great. To the extent that the search for the Holy Grail is character forming, and enables the searcher to develop nobler qualities within their character, to that extent, they're searching for the Holy Grail. It's not the actual search, 
It's what the search does to their character and making the character more noble that's really the key that helps them to, to cultivate the finer qualities, that forgiveness, compassion, etc. I was mentioning earlier. It's to that extent the person is really on a search then. They're really finding the Holy Grail as they find uh, those qualities as they go through their search. For example, in the Arthurian legends, there was two questions that the knights were supposed to ask as they travelled and, and they came across a situation where there was disturbance or travail or what people suffering. They would ask these two questions and the two questions that are spoken in kind of old-fashioned English were what ails thee and whom does it serve? Now in modern speak you could say how are you suffering and who does your suffering serve? Now you can look at that outside and you can look at it from an inside perspective. You can say, you know, what's the political social structure that you're living in that's causing you suffering? Who does that serve? The modern politics. Who gets the money? <laughs> Who gets the power from your social construct you're living in? So that's one way to look at it. Another way of looking at it is, as you're going through life, you experience a certain amount of suffering. And are you using that to serve the, your ego, your sense of separate self, judgmental, cynical, you know, resentful, all of that stuff? Or are you using it to serve the finer, nobler qualities within you? Compassion, forgiveness, enlightened love, etc. So, so that's the question for you. When you suffer in your life, which aspect of yourself is being served by it? Which aspect of your life is growing from it? Is it your immortal part? Is it the qualities that are immortal? Forgiveness is not a mortal quality. It's an immortal quality. Compassion isn't a mortal quality. It's an immortal quality. Enlightened love is not a mortal quality. It's an immortal quality. So if you're using the suffering of your life, to align you more with those immortal qualities, you're becoming more immortal. You're becoming more this higher, nobler aspect of yourself in your life. So that's really the expression of the Holy Grail within you. You're becoming the Grail. Uh, you're refining your character by making it more noble, giving this deeper, wiser aspect of you a capacity and ability to express itself in the world. So what I'm suggesting then is that by all means, if, you, if you're into Arthurian legends and you're into the story of the Grail or the, or the Dan Brown books or whatever you're into, but if that's an enjoyable experience for you, to look at, well, how can that experience help to shape your character? Is it helping to shape your character? Is it helping to shape your character in a noble way? Is it helping to bring out the higher aspects of yourself? And to that extent, that's your true search for the grail. You are searching for the grail then. You know, somebody has no interest in the grail legends or the anything, the grail story in the grail legends or anything like that. But the events of their daily life are something they use instinctively or naturally to, to refine their character. Then they're on the search for the grail, whether they know it or not. But they're not just on the search for the grail, they're on the path to the grail. Somebody cultivating kindness is on the path to, to having the grail. Somebody cultivating forgiveness is on the path to the grail. Somebody cultivating compassion on the path to the grail. There is a mystery in all this, and the real mystery is, what is it you discover when you take this path? What is it that awakens within you? when you take this path? What is it that begins to express in your life? And what perceptions will you have? How will you see life? How will you see other people? How will you see the events of your life as you take this path? And that's an ongoing mystery. That's something that deepens and brings you greater ease and peace of mind and more ability to detach from the outer events in life and then be able to function in the world but not get so caught up in the ways of the world. 
but be able to be more begin to see behind the scenes and begin to see the things that underline the meaning and purpose that underlines the events of our times and not get so caught up in the ins and outs and the swings and roundabouts of those events. And so what, what that will cause in you, you'll discover for yourself. That's part of the mystery because you'll bring your own individual experience to it and your own wisdom and goodness will emerge in the ways that are appropriate for you within your own natural tendencies and abilities. Or you might cultivate new abilities and tendencies to better express that part of you. So, in a nutshell then, really the Holy Grail is finding the highest and best within yourself. And it's in you. Nowhere else. So you need to find it in you. Find what's good in you. And look at how to cultivate it. How can you expand on it? How can you grow it? And that's the price, and it's a happy price, to connect with the immortal part of you. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this exploration in the search for the Holy Grail. Be you. Be your best. Be your best self. You're awesome. Go for it. <laughs>